Look what I got. Any guesses on what I have been doing? No? Let me show you. of you guys follow us from Cog Hill and if you watched um, recently their episode or their video about the bees Miss Tanya lives just down the road from us and I had reached out to her a few weeks back and I asked her if she would be willing to teach me bees I want to learn as much as I can about beekeeping and I've been apprehensive because I've read a lot and it's a lot of words that I don't understand. And so I reached out to her and I said, can we just get hands on with the bees? I really want to have some at the farm. I feel like it would be very beneficial for various reasons, but I want to learn to do it myself. And we finally been able to hook up and I am headed over to her house now and we are going to do some bee work and I'm really excited this is something I've been reading about for over a year something I've wanted to venture into I didn't know where to start I didn't know what all the words are or what they mean and so I'm just ready to dive in and get started and see if this is something that I would really like to pursue for our farm so come on you're gonna go with me and we're gonna go meet Miss Tanya at her house and do some bee work to get started in beekeeping you can do it a couple ways so you can buy what they call a package of bees okay and so what that is is three pounds of bees and a mated queen three pounds of bees and a mated queen well, yeah okay. and, they, and they come in a box that's got screen on it okay and your queen's going to be in a queen cage and she's going to be inside and they're going to have like a thing of sugar to feed them when they make them they just shake bees until they get three pounds so they could shake a pound of bees from this one, a pound of bees from that one, and a pound of bees from that one. Okay. They're not friends. Okay. So you have some. So it's like they, they have their own community. Correct. That's, Correct. You don't go over those train tracks to that one. There you go. Gotcha. So what I don't like about them is you can have bees from three different groups. And so they already don't like each other. Right. And then you got a queen over here that may be from a fourth hive. Okay. So I'm not saying package bees are bad. I'm just saying those are the negatives of okay. it. They're usually a little cheaper. Now what most people, what I recommend all my beekeepers do is to start what we call a nuke. Okay. And a nuke, all it is, it's gonna be a smaller box, usually half the size of a big box. And it's gonna have between four to five frames. Okay. And when I say frames, they'll be like this. Now these are drawn out frames. Okay. So. When they start, they do not look like this. So, okay. and, and they I, don't have all this in it already. No, well, a nuke will. Okay. So when you buy a nuke, whoever you buy it from will guarantee you'll have four to five frames of drawn out comb. Usually they'll give you four and one that's not drawn out okay. so the bees can expand. You'll have a queen that was raised by that set of bees and the bees all belong and grew up together. Okay. So the way you make a nuke is you take an established hive, and this is what we're gonna to try to do today, Okay. is we're gonna to try to go through our hives. We're gonna to try to, first of all, see, this is prime time for them wanting to swarm and right. replicate and make a second set of bees. Okay. And so we're gonna see if we have them already starting that. And if they don't, then we're gonna take a frame of uh, brood with eggs in it okay. and we're going to put it over in our nuke box and we're going to give them some uh, a brood comb we're going to give them some comb with honey in it we'll give them everything they need. need yeah and then if we if they don't have a start of queen cell about 20 to 25 days later they'll raise a queen okay she'll go out and mate and she'll start laying and awesome. so you'll have an established half a hive in 25 days. So this one came out of one that's already been doing work. Yeah. And... and this is a wax moth. These are bad. Okay. Because they want to eat all that. <laughs> oh, I saw. Is that where people put like dryer sheets or well, what does that do? Okay. So, and you'll see that because we're going to do that today too. Okay. Um, there's this, there's two pests that, well, there's actually three, but there's three pests that bug the honeybees. 
The first pest um, is called a hive beetle. Okay. And it's a little black beetle. Right. And what it does is it won't hurt the bees, but it eats their honey and it just causes makes it, them work harder yeah okay makes them work harder okay so i have found that if you get these swiffer unscented sheets mm -hmm. you can put them and i'll show you how i do it but you basically kind of open them up flat and then we're going to put them on the top of our hive box like this okay and we're going to take the inner cover and we're going to squish it down so the inner cover will keep it in place yeah because the bees don't like anything foreign in their hive and they want to take this out the front door okay so and then it, it'll block up well and not only would it block up but just you know if you ever if you ever put anything in their hive and you see them pull it out the front door that's it's why because they're getting rid of it yeah they're getting rid of it so okay. as a beekeeper you can say no you can't get rid of it because i'm gonna i'm gonna put it down you know and they can only okay. pull it so far right but them pulling it it will make these fibers come up and the hive beetles trap on it but the bees don't gotcha so it's a really pretty cool um, yeah. organic treatment and that's what i try to do i try not to use any chemicals okay. but um but you'll find out sometimes you just have to yeah right so um just like in your vegetable garden you mm -hmm. try to do as right. chemical free or organic as you can and then move your stronger pesticides as right. you have to um so that covers the hive beetle. Okay. The second pest that will come is when, and you'll probably see it in this little bitty tiny hive, mm -hmm. is when the hive gets real weak and the bees can't protect it, wax moths will move in. So there's okay. this moth, and the way you know they're moving in is you see how this spider web is on the comb? Uh-huh, that's they, filled in? Yep, Yeah. they tunnel. They tunnel in, and so if I was to take a knife and come through here, we could probably find some wax beetle gotcha. larvae. Okay. And um, so they will only move in when your hive gets weak. Okay. They're the decomposers of the world. They're like the ants and okay. the caterpillars and yes. anybody that right. eats the, you know, crap. the worms. Yeah, the worms. Yeah. yeah, they're the worms of the bee family. Okay. So again, they won't harm the bees. They just clean up when the bees are gone. Right. Okay. <clears throat> the other um, pest you have is the varroa mite, and I'll see if I can show you some of those. But they're like the mosquito to us. Okay. So. They actually hitch a ride on the back of the bee. They come into the colony. They wait and usually it's females, will go in and when the bees are laying babies, mm -hmm. eggs, they'll climb in the cell with the egg and they'll that female will start having her babies along with the multiplying and the aging of the bee growing and her babies will feed off that blood or mm -hmm. you know juices of the baby bee mm -hmm. again just like the mosquito they right. don't want to kill it right they just want to drain it correct yeah and so when the bee is born all these varroa mites come out with it okay and then so they can really expand really really fast yeah especially in summer right what they like to do is uh, a bee will be either a drone which is a boy or a worker bee, which is a female. Okay. And um, they like to go in the drone brew because the drone brew take a little longer time to hatch. Yeah. And so they can have more and more babies. Yeah. So if I'll show you, because we'll see some drone brood and you can break it apart and you can look on the white larva of the bee mm -hmm. and you'll see a little brown dot okay. and it'll kind of move. And that's how you know if you got varroa mites or not. There are several treatments that you can do. Most of them you cannot do with honey supers on. Okay. So usually most people treat their hives either um, during the fall when they mm -hmm. take the honey supers right. off or like me, a split naturally breaks the cycle. So okay. when you do a split, you're kind of breaking you're up a queen. The... Yeah, you're kind of breaking up a queen laying. So it kind of helps kind of break it up a little bit. Yeah. So um, okay. and since you're building a hive, you're not having honey supers on. So you could treat at that time if you wanted to. Okay. So um, I tell people a lot of times you don't even ha have to go into your hive. You can just kind of watch the hive. Uh -huh. So you'll see them come in and they'll have little yellow. And you can get on the other side if you want to. Um, Is there yeah, anything I don't need to do? Yeah. Well, just don't get in the very front door because they're coming and going. Okay. And so even when we work them, we're going to work them from the from side. From the side? Okay. Yeah. Or the back. Right. But as you watch the bees come in, You'll see some of them come in and they'll have yellow on their legs or maybe orange or something like that. Yeah, that's and the pollen. That's the pollen. Okay. So in order for them to raise baby bees, they need pollen and they need nectar. 
Okay. And they mix them together and they make what they call bee bread to feed the babies. And so... Bee bread. Yeah, bee okay. bread. And so as long as they're bringing in pollen, somebody is in here laying. Okay. So without even opening, I you can You know tell this is healthy and thriving. Healthy and thriving. Gotcha. And I can do the same thing for this hive and this hive and, you know... As long as they're bringing something in. As long as they're bringing something in. Okay. So I don't even have to open it and I can tell that right, right from the beginning. So do you ever have to supplement? You, you may. Um, the bad thing about honeybees is they will only fly if it's really above 55 degrees. Okay. They don't fly in the rain and they don't fly if it's real windy. So if you're gonna have um, several days where there's no, you know, it's just raining like a right. week straight, then they're gonna eat all their reserves. Okay. So you might have to supplement. So they're not gonna leave, they're just gonna stay in there and use up what they've got. And they could potentially starve to death. If there's not enough. Correct. To supplement. Yeah. Okay. And um, so this time of year, you, you lose more bees this time of year to starvation than you do anything because the temperatures are going woo, up woo, and woo, right. Woo, woo. There's Rain, nothing steady. Sun. Yeah. Yes. It's just, you know, and then the other thing, like most people don't know, but when it rains, it washes the nectar off of this bloom. Right. And so it takes the next day before a new bloom is coming that they'll have something to actually use. Right. So you might see a bunch of stuff out here blooming right now. But if it rains, which we got rain coming, coming tomorrow, right. it'll wash all that nectar away and it'll take new blooms in order to give them something to work. And the other thing about a honeybee that's interesting is when they go out, they only go out and work one type of plant. Okay. So when they go out and they find dandelion, that's all they're that's going to all. work. Okay. She's not going to go to... So that's what they look for first? Is dandelion no, or it's just, just they target one specific whatever they decide on so like you can see this black wild blackberries blooming around my um yes uh-huh we have so, a lot of that in our pasture yeah and they like wild blackberry okay uh, but once she goes out she's only going to hit wild blackberry okay now, once, once she's she, done it once yeah once she comes back to the hive and drops her load uh-huh she may go out now and do dandelions so when you're okay. watching inside the hive, you're going to see some bees and they're going to be dancing and they're kind of shaking their butt. Uh -huh. That's them communicating, saying, hey, man, I found, I found something. Gotcha. And, and that movement that she's doing uh -huh. is re in relation to the sun, how far they've got to go to go find that nectar. That is so cool. So they they do a lot of communicating. Uh -huh. And then if so these you, are very smart. They are very smart. Okay. Now, honeybees, this particular honeybee is not native to the United States. Okay. These, most of the honeybees we have are European. Oh, so, oh, um, okay. any of our native true honeybees, you know, they don't, they don't exist. Okay. So, most of our bees are either from Russia, which are aggressive, and, um, but they make a lot of honey. Yeah. So, you know, they're aggressive, right, but they make a lot right. of honey. And then you have mainly Italians, which is what mo mainly I have is a mixture of Italians. And they're very docile, but they don't make as much honey. So you're kind of trying to balance out. Do you want to Which, work nice right. bees and make a little honey? Or do you want to work yeah. kind of mean, aggressive bees and make a lot of honey? Right. So you're kind of just having to decide. I think I would stick with nice ones to start with. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I'll just... And then you can listen to their timber. Uh -huh. You know, right now it's just a steady... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. like a song. It's working. Yeah. But as we start inspecting them, you're going to hear the that tone gets change. Louder. Okay. And um, so I tell everybody, when you open a hive, know what your goal is. Uh -huh. Complete your goal as fast as you can. Okay. With as least amount of interruption to the hive as you can. Okay. Because you're going to hear that timber change. Mm -hmm. And um, when you start hearing it change, you're running out of time. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Well, you're so, invading their area. Yeah. And then um, I got tell a job to do. most of my hives, um, the first two boxes are the bees. So I never take honey from these two boxes. Okay. So I only get to take honey from the third and up. Okay. So anything below that is what it's they need to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, in the winter, I might even leave on this third box, depending upon what the right. winter forecast right. is. And so how long does it take to start producing your first bit of honey to be able to draw off of it. Well, if you start with a nuke, um, you can you can get honey faster. Uh -huh. um, the hardest, and I'll sh which I'll show you those frames, for yeah. every pound of that beeswax, 
that um, is on that frame, it takes eight pounds of nectar or sugar water to build it. Okay. So they've got to first, when you first start out with bees, you may not have drawn comb like I have. Yeah. And so it's going to take, the bees are going to spend all their resources just building comb first. Because they yes, got to have they a gotta place. they got to have, right. They got to have a place to The put, foundation. Yep. They okay. got to they gotta have a house. Yes. And so you've given them the four walls and you've given them some starter furniture. Right. But they got to bring they in the sheets and the, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So it could take them a while depending upon what your nectar is. So a lot of beginning beekeepers, we tell them, feed, 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 feed. Okay. You know, just pour the sugar water to them. Um, give them a little bit of protein patties. Okay. And um, so that that way they don't have to go, you know, so Looking far. far yeah. yeah. And um, because as soon, it takes them longer to build those first two boxes. I mean, it, it might be your first year is just them building that, that foundation. Yeah. And then the second year is when you harvest honey. Okay. But if you have a bunch of resources, um, if you have a bunch of clover, if you have a bunch of privet, they make a lot of honey off of privet. Oh. Um, they make a lot of honey off we of blackberry. I think we have a lot of privet. Yeah. So just um, there's a, a website that tells you all the nectar sources yeah. and the time of the year that they bloom. And so um, if you have those high nectar sources, then they can build up faster. Faster. Okay. Yeah. So. It really just depends. But, well, this um, is pretty cool. But yeah, a nuke box um, over here is room for them to build. This has got some rainwater in it. This has got some nuke box? Yeah. So this is half the size of one of those deeps. Okay. And um, so you can put up to five frames in here. And most of everything I run is a 10 frame hive, but they do make eight frame hives. Uh, the good is thing, there a reason to not go ahead and go bigger in the wait, beginning? Wait. Wait. Yep. A lot thing. of my women beekeepers don't do 10 frames. They do eight. Okay. And that's because it weighs less when you're picking up the boxes. Okay. So, so that bottom, the bottom one? Is yeah. It will hold 10. Now you're going to see when you count mine that all mine have nine in them. Okay. So when you first start a, a hive up, you want the frames as close you know touching and everything as you can okay. get why why is that because bees love to mess you up and draw their own comb okay so most of my stuff that i use either has plastic in the um middle of it or it'll have natural beeswax foundation so i don't you can run foundationless comb um okay. which a lot of beekeepers <gasps> oh yep she done got you yeah <laughs> Oh, Here. My head. Okay, so I was going to stop you before you did that. Oh, sorry. Okay. What you did is you squeezed it and you actually put the venom further into you. So anytime okay. you get stung by a bee, take your fingernail and and brush oh, it out. Oh, get her, get her, yeah. get her. Here, let's just walk up here. Okay, bit. well, get her out of here. So if you ever um, be as calm as you can around them. Okay. It's hard for me to do that when they're up near my yeah. eyeballs. Well, I didn't. <laughs> she scared me. Yeah. Well, when they get around my eyeballs like that yeah. one was, I got some uh, lavender well, oil. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. Gonna put some lavender oil on your sink. Okay. Wherever you think it would. <laughs> um, but what oh, was, okay, so was that sting just out of happen chance that we collided? Probably you were in her flight path and she just ran into you by accident okay. and then you did this. Yes, right. Yeah. And I and so, mashed her into my head. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's okay. why I, uh, where you were standing, you were kind of in the flight path for that yellow. Oh, I see on the back side. Hive. Yeah, they use okay. both sides of that one for some unknown reason. Well, that's all right. But some of my friends only wear a veil okay. and some wear gloves and a veil and some have a half jacket. So there's all kinds of beekeeping. Um, I guess equipment for right. lack of us. You just have to go with what makes you comfortable. Okay. I have dropped a whole hive of bees before. Well, I would probably uh and I go swell bad. Full. Yeah. So since I swell bad and I have dropped a hive of bees, mm. I like a head to toe suit. Yeah. When I'm when I know I'm gonna work a lot of bees. Right. So I told you to be that the, the thing that's the worst about beekeeping is lighting and getting the smoker to stay lit. Right. They make lots of different smokers. Um, this is like probably the cheapest one they make. Yeah. <laughs> so you can spend well, as little. So then you don't have to have an expensive one. No. Right? Okay. Um, this is just tin, and it had some uh, cloth bellows. Yeah. And then I had to replace them when it wore out and put these plastic ones on. 
Um, they have a bellow in the bottom that blows your air, and then they need a, some type of tin or something that goes in the bottom just to keep it where your air can blow good. Right. Like that. And so oh. I usually start with a piece of paper okay. and get it going. And then pine straw works real good. We don't have a lot of that. And the other thing that works real good is shavings out of your chicken house. I got plenty of that. <laughs> so, see if I can get it stayed. So I'm just going to try to get this lit first and drop that in. And then I'm going to get me just a little bit of pine straw. Just a little handful? Yeah, just a little handful. And do you have to keep feeding it? Um, I'll show you what I do. So I get it started. And again, without catching yourself on fire. Yeah. Because it's a fine line. You want smoke, not fire. Okay. And then I'll start it with some pine straw. And kind of let that go for a minute. Um, after you cut your grass and it dries out, that works real good. Okay. Leaves, you'll find as we're working the bees, I'll just reach down and grab, grab them. Some. So do you pack it full? No, you want it loosely packed. Okay. So it has airflow. Yeah, it needs some airflow. Okay. I always keep a suit down here just in case something happens. So if we do our job right, hopefully the only thing we have to carry with us is our high tool. Okay. And my little swiffer sheets. And hopefully our smoker stays lit. So I'm gonna see if I can, I don't know if it's focusing. Yes. But the yellow that you see or the various colors that you see is different kinds of pollen. So, and there's a pollen chart that you can look at on the internet that'll tell you what each color, what kind of flower it came from. And then the glossy stuff is nectar. Is so once cool. they get enough nectar in the cells, then they'll start drying it out. And the way they dry it out is by beating their wings against it, kind of pushing air over it. Oh. And then they'll cap it with wax that they make. That is so cool. And you said our, our objective today is? Well, what I'm doing today is I'm looking to see, are they making queen cells? Right. Are they getting ready to swarm? And if they are, then I'm gonna capture those and I'll show you if we find some. Yeah. And we'll make nukes. And if they're not, and they've got plenty of room and they look like they're doing good, then I'll leave them alone. So, but I might try to make a few nukes and yeah. you know, just to kind of right. kind of give them some room but I'll show you how to, how we'll do that. So I'm gonna go a little faster now. Okay. But if, I, if you have no, questions. No, you're fine. I'm trying to get to where I can find you some eggs. Yeah. And then I'll show you that. But right now it's mainly just pollen and... Um, you're just checking, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna, cause I know I gotta go down deeper probably to get to babies. I will show you. Remember I told you most of my frames have a plastic liner yes. in them? Yes. Uh-huh. So this will be a good example of that if I can get it out. Oh, wow. Look how thick that thing is. <gasps> well, see that how, is so cool. So see how they've drawn comb on it? Yeah. So what do you do with that? You can actually melt that down and make all kinds of beeswax products. Wow, look how full that is. Yeah. So it starts out like this, naked per se, and the little yellow you can see is beeswax. Uh-huh. And then the bees will draw it out. But if they draw it out like wonky like this, then I'll kind of just lightly press it back down to kind of tell them, no ladies, that's not how you want it. Yeah, so if they get up under there, what happens? Uh, because... They can still get out. There's all oh, kinds okay. of little trails for them. But like this, you could take it and kind of just, you know. Is that like an egg right there on the inside of that one? Yeah, so that white stuff right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, so that's larvae. And that's what turns into another bee. A bee. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just kind of take this and kind of just lightly push it. And it'll just stick because it's it, sticky? Yes, yeah, sticky. And then I'm trying not to make sure I don't trap anybody. Right. So I push down a little bit and then I kind of leave some room for them to move. That's so cool. Okay, I think this will be my last one. Because it looks like... It looks like pretty much this is just going to be honey storage right now. Remember me telling you I like to move mine to nine frames? Yes. 
So that's what I'm doing now is I'm scooting everything over. Doing them some room. Yeah. And so if you take a 10 frame box and you make it a nine frame, your spacing with gloves is your thumb uh -huh. stuck down and your forefinger in front. Right. And that'll tell you the perfect spacing so you can kind of move all them. equal. Yeah, so it's all equal. So that's what I'm doing now is equalizing that out. How long have you been beekeeping? Let's see here. I think I think I got started in it in 2013, but my granddaddy kept bees when I was little. So I never knew all the benefits until I started reading about them and it's they're just fascinating. Now this one done been glued in. Yeah. <laughs> so see how all that propolis? Uh-huh. Propolis, that one good. All right, so when you take a box off to the second one, you kind of want to get your hive tool in. Okay. And kind of just... Like that? Yep, and, just and, lift. And, and lift it up. And then when you pull it up, you want to lift it and twist it. Oh, wow. And then take it off. That is so So cool. I'll let you pick up that one because that one does not have a whole lot of honey. Boy, y'all made a mess. That is so neat. What is all that? It's where a frame <laughs> fell in between. Oh, gotcha. And they've just built around Yep. It. See, that's what I mean by they love to make a mess. So I'll just take all that. But um, this is a good one to learn on, though. So... You'll have to kind of get, I'm going to let you hold this one. Yeah. But when you hold it, you can see there's some white stuff in there. Just put it in my hand? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. And then do you see the little white larva? Oh, I see it. Yes. Okay. So they'll start out as eggs, and they'll okay. look like little grains of rice. And yes. they'll stay like that for like, I don't know, two or three days. And yeah. then they'll start. Oh, there's one at the top. Yeah. And that's one that's already turned into a larva. And, um once they they'll stay like that and they'll feed them royal jelly and okay. then then they'll turn into this little larvae like c it'll be like a c the letter c yes and then eventually kind of looks like, like maggots it kind of looks like maggots okay then eventually the bees will cap it off and that's what this one is right here is where they've capped it off uh -huh. and then the bees when they're born they chew through this capping and come out of it and then they turn around and clean out their cell and make it ready for the next one. So the ones that have larvae in them and not capped, what are those waiting on? Um, they're feeding them. So remember that bee bread I was telling uh -huh. you about? So they're waiting on them to get to a certain age. Okay. And then once the larvae gets basically about like that, they'll cap it off. Oh, okay. But that was a good one to learn on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, bees... Oh, and look, what is that? Um, that's honey. That's honey well, that's dripping off your glove. So mm -hmm. And so, um, and they'll, if natural comb, this if this is true natural comb because there's nothing in between it. Uh -huh. So you can see that they can fill up both sides. Right. Yeah. And there's just a little thin layer separating them. Wow. Yeah. So I would keep this once the bees are off of it and you can, I freeze all my comb and then melt it down at one time. Okay. So, and then you can save your comb and make products. Wow. Leave the top and go down to the bottom. But this smoke will only do that for so long. So that's why you have to work quickly. That's why you have to work quickly. And so then you also got to keep your smoker yeah. continually fed. So at any point, are you at risk of harming them? If it's cold weather, yes. So that's why we waited till it was a sunny, warm day. Correct. And no wind. No wind. Yeah. yeah because oh, that's something we've been battling. Yeah, because this time of year, as I told you, they don't fly wow. unless it's 60 or above. There's, I wonder if I can get that sound. That sound is crazy. And so you, but you hear their, temp, their temper is changing. Yeah. So they're starting to get a little irritated with me. So again, I'm just going to look down, uh -huh. see who has the most least bees. And I'll start with that frame. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine. So this one does have nine. Oh, wow. Okay, so these are shorter because it's a shorter box. Okay. And these are the beginnings of queen cells. 
So, so each one of those will create a queen? They could. Oh, so potentially. They, yeah, they have to have an egg laid in it. Uh -huh. And then they'll build it out and it'll look kind of like a peanut. Okay. And to go from this stage to There's a one right here. fully developed queen will be about 24 days. Wow. So if you take this frame, a, a perfect brood nest will have some pollen, then it'll have some nectar, and then the babies will be in the center. Uh huh. So all they all they got to do is go to, go to the nursery and get yeah. some food and come right back. Wow. They don't have to travel the yeah. world. So you may not see bees lay the whole frame. Uh huh. Sometimes they will, but usually they'll only lay in the middle. So if they're doing what they're supposed to do, it'll be in the center and surrounded by the food. That Correct. It needs. And then if you were to take this frame uh -huh. and kind of look, and it, and the best way to look is to have the sun. The reason why I'm Shining over here is to have the sun kind of coming over your shoulder looking down yeah and you I can, can see, see the, the shiny in there yeah so this is all pollen and this is nectar and if you can kind of i'm going to just kind of tilt mm -hmm. and you'll see the white right. larvae mm -hmm. and then if you were to look even closer you'll see some eggs in there you may have to have glasses to see the eggs i don't <laughs> know how good your eyes are i have pretty good eyes okay but i don't know about the camera yeah but my eyes are not that good so sometimes if I want to truly raise queens, then I'll have to put on some glasses to be able and to And people see. raise just queens to sell, yep. too, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, the going rate right now is $40 just wow. for one queen. Wow, wow. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this one out just to get... Again, I like a little room to work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to prop this one up. Do you prefer the wooden over the plastic? Um, or does it matter? Yeah, I don't like the... This is a full plastic one. Yeah. Um, I inherited some of these and some bees I bought. Yeah. And um, if they've got a lot of beeswax on them, the uh -huh. bees will draw them out. But okay. if they don't have a lot of beeswax on them and it's not a good nectar flow, they do not like plastic. Okay. So. So bees pick what they prefer. Well, and it's you just. You kind of have to cater to that if you see. It's just, you know, what I can say I've noticed my, you know, mm. almost 10 years of beekeeping. Right. And I was trying to find you a boy is what I was looking for. When I find you a little fat one, you won't be able to miss him. You'll be like, oh, boy, he's huge. <laughs> a lot of people think the boys are the queens because they're so, so big. big. So what does the queens look like? Um, they mine, have, what did I read? Mine usually have red butts, okay. um, but I do have a Are few. they very e easy to discern? Yes. Usually, you'll, you, when I show you one, you'll be able to tell. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm just uh -huh. looking in these cells, making sure they don't have any eggs in them yet. Because that'll be a uh, sign that they may be swarming. Now this one, she was just born. See how she almost looks kind of a little deformed? Yes. Yeah, because she's still tiny. Yeah, she's still so tiny. So what is, is that white right here on the inside of that? Yep. What is that? That's uh, baby bees. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they will, and, and like if you look down, you see that larvae I uncapped? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. Do you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so you could kind of turn that over. And they would they cover it back up? They'll actually eat it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's protein. So, um, but the bees are real bad about wanting to glue everything together. Yeah, right. And they'll actually put baby bees anywhere they can, you know. So you can just hear their tempers getting a little. Yeah, they're getting a little more, wound up. They now. are. Because if you can imagine, I came for a visit, and now I'm down. Now you're in the basement. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm down here in somebody's underwear drawer. That's right. So again, it's I'm, so fascinating to me that they build this. Yeah. So like this, this was just a frame. This was just a frame. This had natural beeswax foundation in the middle, uh -huh. and then they've added the difference to it. So again, what I'm mainly looking to see is if they're making swarm cells on this one. Okay. So this one was a medium frame wow. that I left in there, and they drew it out to make it a deep. Yeah, they did. I can see it down yeah. in there. So. And again, I'm just looking in those queen cups, those things that look like peanuts. Uh huh. I'm just looking inside of them to see if they've got any eggs or anything in them. And right now they don't. Usually, if I don't see queen cups down to this box, I'm usually good. Okay. This is another one that was a medium that they've drawn out to a D. Is that what that is? Yep. But it is empty. Okay. So, sometimes they'll make what I call practice cups in case they need to raise a queen real quick. Uh-huh. 
and it'll be ready for it'll it. be ready it's like your mother in law suite that's right and as you can see i'm sliding the frame in kind of slow right so that there are any bees in there they hopefully got they time, got time to, to get out of there yeah. and then once you start putting your boxes back mm -hmm. you smoke to get everybody hopefully out of the way right and then you'll pick up your box try to you know, put it back on kind of level you know get your corners mm -hmm. adjusted yeah yeah because they'll come in and seal that back off they will they? are there any beginner mistakes to look to, that can be prevented um i mean i can make mistakes says so. right <laughs> yeah i mean probably the one thing i tell people is be very careful what you spray you know, bees are very susceptible to pesticides. Right. And Roundup. And, okay. So you don't want to put your top on immediately or okay. you'll squish all these. So you want them to go inside. Yeah. Or you can just take your hand and just brush them off. Okay. Either one. But either way, you don't want... I mean, I try to kind of give them a little bit of smoke. Yeah. Now, when I inspect hives, since I've done stirred this one up, I'm gonna wait and I wouldn't inspect this one. Okay, so you're gonna go kind of far off. I'm, I'm gonna skip a hive. Okay. But nothing like those other ones. No, no, no. <laughs> Can you talk me through it? So again, we always pick the frame with the mo with the, the least leaf. bees. Okay. So we don't risk um, pulling out our queen initially and so this one the only thing it has in it is pollen okay i feel how light it is oh yeah compared to so that one. what's the difference in the color here um well this is new comb so the whiter it okay. is the newer it is okay and the darker it is the older it is it almost looks like rust it does don't it when they try to super cedar uh -huh. they'll build queen cells in the middle of the frame so is that they're getting ready for her or she's... They're fixing to kill her and do away with her and get, get another, another one. one. Yep. Gotcha. Or they're at least going to try, you know, and that's why you see... If they don't succeed, what happens? They'll eventually all die. So do, does now, she like isolate herself? They'll actually take her out and kill her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the hive will eventually... This, this is not a big enough hive to yeah. make it. So I could either... Combine it up with a stronger hive, or you start building up, or I start building up. Okay. So, um, but I was just going to show you the difference yeah. how those queen cups were on the bottom, right? And these queen cups are on the face or at the top, right? And that's why it's because they're trying to get rid of. They're them. trying to oust her. They're basically. Is there a reason why they do she's that? She's not laying good. She's not yeah. doing her job. Yep. She's slacking. So when I do look for the queen, uh -huh. I try to start down here on the on the bottom frame. Okay. And then I work kind of my way, you know, uh -huh. and then kind of keep, you know, yeah. making circles. So the difference between her and them, she'll usually have a long, um, gated red butt. Some of my queens do have black. So like, see how this one's got more, uh -huh. this is not a queen, right? but that bee has more black where some of these are more yellow. yellow. Uh -huh. So I do have a few uh -huh. queens that are very hard to see. So but, none of these will ever become a queen. You're either a queen or you're not. You're either born a queen or you're not. Okay. Yeah. Now, you can have what they call a laying worker. So, what could happen in this hive, because I have not found the queen, is that one of the workers could start trying to lay eggs mm -hmm. and trying to help out the uh, hive. But since she's never Taking been... Taking the slack of yeah. the queen. But since she's never been mated, she'll only lay unfertile eggs, which are boys. Oh. So, so, this queen is gone because I do not see her in here because she was red I saw her last so, week you might have already told me if you have I'm sorry what if she's gone what do you do now as far as a beekeeper so as a beekeeper I would normally take this frame and douse it right here in front of a stronger hive okay and let the bees go into this hive okay and then I would reuse this comb okay and make either a split or you right. know start but over this is really your most valuable resource okay because as i told you for every pound of this yeah it took eight pounds to make it of nectar or sugar water yeah 
So what I do is when I get all the bees off of this, I'll stick it in the freezer uh -huh. and freeze it. And they're one big batch mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. You can, yeah, I mean, you could use it to make product with, but I would much rather keep this drawn comb to make splits and catch. Yes, right. Yeah. So, but I was hoping I could find your queen in here, but she's gone. That's so Because cool. I did not see her. Like I said, I did see her last week. So, but, um, that brown box that set my truck I'm going to use to replace this one with. And I noticed they're all off the ground. Is that important? I like mine off the ground. I just, mean, I would too just for convenience. Well, you don't want them too high because okay. as you start stacking them, you know. That, then you're on top of your head. Yeah, and wind and, and storms and, and stuff like that. But um, I like to be able to weed eat out from underneath yeah. mine. So, okay. you know. But, I mean, if you don't have a big ant problem, you could put them on the ground, mm -hmm. you know. It looks better up, too, I think. But um, either one, you know, it's whatever you decide. So I'm gonna, But there's no harm in them just being on the ground. Well, the only thing that's harmful is there's a lot more uh, pests like ants and, you know, rodents and mice. Ground, and, ground. Yeah, bugs. yeah, that's the only negative. Okay. So um, since this box is so shoddy, which is what I wanted to show you, uh -huh. I'm going to swap it out with a, a better box. Maybe it's not a brand new box, but it's better than that. All right. So again, if these start coming up, you can just give them a little puff. Say nothing to see here, ladies, going back down. Right. Can I pry on this uh -huh. side? Yeah. Just curious. Okay. And then I just usually prop this. Somewhere. Ooh, there they go. I keep feeling like I gotta stop. They're gonna get me. <laughs> Well, this one, you notice we popped it open and their timber was a little bit different already uh -huh. from the beginning. Right. So these are already a little bit agitated. And I think it's because they've been having to defend this entrance yeah. and the front entrance. Yeah. I mean, I may be wrong, but... They're, yeah, they're having to cover both sides yeah. instead of just one. So since it's... I'm pulling all these out, you can work on one side and I'll work on the other. You're pulling all of them? Yep. Okay. Because this box has got to go. I'll lay this on the ground? You can, or that's what this little thing right here is for. Uh -huh. Is it will actually hang on it. And then just you just use it and then just pull it up gently. I don't want to hurt the comb. Do you have any order you want them in? No, nah, you just push them together. Some beekeepers will tell you that you should always put them back in the exact order they were in the hive. I wonder why that is. Well, they just say it's like, do you want somebody coming over and moving your Rearrange. furniture? <laughs> yeah. That's what I've always heard. So. Mm -hmm. Now this is, uh, while we're here, I'll just show this. Once they've capped uh -huh. the larva, oh, wow, that's, a lot. yeah. then that's what they'll look like once they've capped them. So those are just waiting to hatch. Yep. And so if they're flat like this, I call it flat and matte. Flat and matte, yeah. They'll be girls. Okay. If they look like bullets, like they'll be popped up, uh -huh. then they'll be boy bees. Here's a boy bee right here. That's a boy. Okay. See how much fatter? Oh, yeah, yeah. See how yeah, much fatter he is? Him. Yeah. So, um, so if you were to take off your gloves, you could pick him up. And he wouldn't. He can't sting you. He wouldn't be biting. The only use for a boy is to go out and mate with the queen. That's their only value. So in the fall, come winter, they'll actually kick all the boys out. Because they don't want to feed them over winter. Oh, I found your queen. Hold on, let me show you. Okay. Here's your queen. Hurry up. She'll be moving. Oh, I see how big she is. See how she has got right, a big right here red. At the very top. Yep. See how big red okay. she is. Uh huh. Yeah. See how all the bees look at her too. Yeah, they follow in her. Or, and they move out of her way. Uh huh. When she walks, they move. Right. Yep. There. That's her. So, so yeah, you got all your. Yeah. You got to see boys and girls. Yeah. And the queen. I definitely want to make sure I get her in here. Do you prefer to put her anywhere specific? When I you're... don't. I just, you know, handle her real gently. 
So what do you do with the bees that are in the box? I'm going to show you how I do that. Oh, it's heavy. And that's because it's got more nectar in it. And become a swarm box <laughs> and those will leave that box and come on in over here because there's nothing else in there yeah there's nothing in here okay. and then so when i'm finished i can mm -hmm. take this box and just whack it on top no and they'll all come out i could since there's so few though yeah. i can also do it over here on the ground right do you have to worry about any predators um bears will get in your beehives that's not common here though right well we do have a bear on walnut creek a oh, black Lord. bear okay um, i haven't knock on wood yeah seen them on my you know near my hives yet oh wow that one's cool yeah so that's what you want so this is this is ideal this tells you you got a dang good queen oh good they ain't gonna supersede her yeah now what they might do is if she runs out of room to lay mm -hmm. and they're bringing in nectar they'll the original queen and half the workforce will swarm and leave and in her place they'll have those queen cells we were talking uh -huh. about ready to make new queens but that's significant and you can touch this that, one all you is want is this a, a guy a boy right here yes okay very I good she's very big yep fat yes and there's um, another one right here yep and there's see several. how see how these right here are flat and matte uh -huh. see how these look like bullets oh yeah those are your boy bees that look like bullets okay. they take a little bit bigger cell well they're a bigger bee they're a bigger bee it's like so, egg i mean it's like you know chicken versus duck versus goose correct. the bigger the animal the bigger the egg correct okay it's the exact same thing so um this one's laying this hive's laying she's laying real good so this is one i would i, I recommend as a beekeeper Keep you a journal, uh -huh. number your hives, and yeah. when you start your inspections, keep either notes. start, you know, from here, or, you know, and keep notes and say, okay, today's day, I looked at this hive, yeah. found the queen, okay. looked great, laying pattern, fabulous, yes. um, bringing in nectar, has resources, yeah. um, you know, but do they need another box, you know? Yeah. So when I, I'll give mine another box when the current boxes are 70 percent full okay so this one could stand yeah, yeah could right stand this one is one. thriving yes yeah wow so That's this one so awesome and you saw that stuff dripping yeah, and out see, those are up so those are boys yep those are boys see this dripping that's nectar see it shaking out uh-huh so nectar comes in really really wet and so the bees have to dry it out in order to turn it into honey. Right. So honey has to be 17% or less moisture content. So any more than that, and it'll ferment on you, which if you're huh. wanting to make meat, it's fine. But most of the time you're not. Right. That's not that's most not people's your goal. goal. Yeah. So now my looking and seeing how good this hive is doing you could split this one and it would both i could split it mm -hmm. i could split it it has the resources that it does yes so if i made a split and, and we can do one real quick just sitting now because i know my queen's over here right yeah i know where she's at so i can make a split and not have to worry about the queen okay so the first thing i want to pull is a frame of fully capped brood which which this you, is yeah and the reason why I want to do that, those are all baby bees that are and going And they're going to establish the next one. Correct. Okay. So I pull that one out to the side. And again, I know where my queen is, so yes. whatever I do, you know, no problems. Because they will establish their own queen. Correct. This one is a mixture of boy bees and girl bees. But what I don't like about it is most of the, when you look at it, and mm -hmm. I'll let you hold it in your hand, yeah. but most of it when you look at it is already got the larva. It's already turned. And in order to make a queen, they need a cell that's got an egg. Uh -huh. So they need a real young larva. So that's not ideal okay. to use for making. This one's a little old too. Okay. So I don't really like this one or this one. How many, random, how many thousands of bees do you think is in this box? Well, they say when you start with a three pound package, it would be 10,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
Now this one would probably uh -huh. have close to probably a hundred thousand just based on the age. So right now I'm looking for very young. Yeah, you, want me this one yeah, back you put in. that one back. I'm looking for very young larva or an egg. So if it's gonna be anywhere, it's gonna be back towards the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna go and get my nuke box and bring it over here. So the older eggs larvae are down here. Uh-huh. And as you make the circles, your younger ones should be up here at the top. So from what I'm seeing, there looks like there's some eggs in there. So I think that's gonna be the frame I'm gonna give them. Okay. To make babies out of. And that's just the beginning of a new hive. So I would mark, like, in a perfect world, I'd put the date on this. Mm -hmm. And it would take them 24 days, 24 to 25 days, between now to the queen would be born and laying in this particular hive. To establish a new mm -hmm. one. Okay. And so all these frames that are empty now, we'd go and grab out of the back of my truck and grab frames to replace these. And that'll give the queen somewhere to lay. So if this hive was close to thinking about swarming, I've just given her more room. Right. She has so, no reason to. Yeah, then. she has no reason to. They only swarm because they are out of room where they're at. And and the hive is doing so well. Right. That She's they gonna think, go establish somewhere yep, else. They think there's good enough success in them dividing in half and taking half of their resources with them mm -hmm. and leaving half behind. So she's laying from top to bottom. Yeah. So she had, you know, brood in the very bottom all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. And I see no peanuts. Right. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I am having a blast. And I am so thankful that she has let me come out here and do this with her. So we're putting empty ones in mm -hmm. that we took out. That we took out to make our split. And they will build off of this so that they don't swarm and go somewhere else. We because you, yeah. <laughs> because you've given her more space yep. to grow. So hopefully she'll go, oh, look at all this space down here. And she'll start laying down there. So they go all over. No matter how high you go, they're, they're going to work the whole. In a perfect world, they usually put their babies on bottom. Yeah. And their honey above them. Okay. But, like I tell everybody, that cell can hold a baby or it can hold honey. Yeah. You know, they don't really care. Okay, so I just left Miss Tanya's house. And I will tell you guys, that was the best farming experience I've had yet. I had the best three hours today learning about the bees and everything that goes with it. She is A plus as far as a teacher, a beekeeper, a person. She is awesome. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching a little bit about my experience. First time dealing with bees. Got stung in the forehead. I ain't even mad. It hurt a little bit, but I ain't mad because I had a good time. I have learned so much. I have learned more in the last three hours than I have reading for the last year about bees. And I am so excited for this next adventure that I'm hoping that we can jump into. Alright guys, we will see you next time.